can think of uh, natural selection uh, in interstellar space. Those that survive are the ones that are uh, more intelligent because they realize what is required uh, for them to uh, have a long-term future. Uh, it's avoiding conflicts on the rock that they were born on. And if you look at us, we are investing most of our resources in uh, military budgets and conflicts. So that is not a sign of intelligence. Yo, welcome. This is Ancient Library. Welcome to the channel. And yeah, thanks for all open-minded people clicking on this video. This is my first video. I'm not watching the numbers and stuff. And I just want to say this at the start. I'm trying to improve my English. I'm trying to improve my skills to get information out, to speak, to keep it entertaining, get better on the Vegas, get better on everything, learning about this, because yeah, I got like... I got like a goal and I want to get information out, my personal opinion. I don't want to make everybody think a certain way. I just want to get out my view and get the reflection from the public. Feel free to comment to to say if you if you if you don't like something, if you like something. Yeah, just give me feedback. I'm I, I will appreciate it. Yeah, so let me start right again. The first endeavor, the first realm we're going to visit is the UFO, UAP, Ufology, Flying Saucers, Aliens, NHI, which means Non-Human Intelligence. Um, all these terms connected with the case, or with the case, with the field, I should say. And there's many, many cases and many, many happenings. And yeah, there's like, of course, like everything, It's uh, there's two camps, the believers, the non-believers. And I just want to dive a little bit, give my personal view, and yeah, I want to... I, I, yeah, I will provide sources on everything. If you want to know something, if you want to, I'm, I'm I'm running through different individuals in this video. I'm gonna link them all in the in the box below. And yeah, that's that. So let me start right again. Um, I mean, I'm born in the '90s, and for me, it's like I'm one of the guys uh, which generation encounters the internet at a very young age like getting casual access on the internet, getting information at a young age. Um, like we got no teachers to do this. This shit got not, got not told in school or something, how you actually learn stuff, how you, how you handle the internet. Uh, I mean, I think our teachers in the school don't know that like the internet is was going to be so big one day in the near future. I mean, it's not old and to get information from the internet it's not pretty hard but yeah to find the right the right things and not get fully deluded on some topics especially on some topics like ufos or other conspiracies and yeah i just gonna proceed i got another picture here which is like a pretty good illustration of the internet looks like a network it is a network and and i mean everybody who's got a phone who's got a computer got an ip and uh yeah he's actually connected in the net that's pretty insane but it's actually not easy to uh to to get the stuff right i mean there's so many actors so many so many people so many forces operating in the internet trying to get forming a certain narrative and i'm gonna dive deep into all of this so um yeah i'm gonna start with some conspiracies i'm gonna touch on two conspiracies in this video the first thing uh is gonna be the jfk assassination happened on the 22nd of November in 1963. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit too young to actually, yeah, to actually see this in the news or something. But for older generation, this was like one event where people actually start to think, think critical. And um, today uh, it's supposedly the 99% of the data has been released but it's so much data that the missing 1% is actually the key stuff. And many people say it's not going to be released until everybody <laughs> is related to the case, everybody related to this day. And whatever happens, happened there, for sure. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, the guy actually got shot in the head. That's like, that's for, for a fact. But who done it? Why? I mean, there's many, many, many thoughts and you can waste thousands of hours on the internet to uh, dive deep in this case. The next one is uh, the 9-11. I mean, it speaks for itself. That's more like my 
my generation, I guess. I was in elementary school. I was like 10 years old, nine years old. And um, yeah, later in my life where I was, where I got access to the internet and um, I was doing research. This was uh, one thing for me and I bet for many others uh, to start actually think about some stuff. Like, um, I mean, it was a, it was a big misery on this day. I mean, that's, that's, that's safe, safe to say. And uh, many people died, but um, yeah, my my personal opinion shifted in shifted over the years. But uh, I think it's still an important thing to teach, an important thing to show the future people, like uh, a good example to start thinking critical. Because either way, if if it's a what, what is it, if it was a false flag, or was it just failure? I mean, uh, on both ends, this is like. A big fail in, in from any direction so yeah that's that then um, I'm gonna trans I got a quick transition to um, this picture and this is like a, a telescope in space and it just stands for like how we advanced over the last years and uh, how we got like new tools and like tech to actually discover the universe and discover space around us and I mean, since 1608, where the first telescope got actually built, and one year later, uh, my man Galileo Galilei make a shocking discovery that the Earth is not the center of the universe, and shocked shocked the mind of all the people there. And it's not so long ago. I mean, it's like 400 years. Yeah, that's like on a, on a universal scale, it's like a blink of an eye. That's nothing. And yeah, and now we got like telescopes floating in the sky. We got telescopes uh, on the ground with like insane tech inside to um, measure things far, far away, many light years away. And we actually know a little bit more than, yeah, in 1608, I guess. But still, I think we know, we know a lot more than nothing, but uh, I think nothing compared to everything which we can learn about the universe. And I mean, our solar system, um, we know all the planets, like supposedly there are some other things, planet 9, etc., which I'm going to talk about in later videos, um, that it's not even clear what our nearest neighbors are, basically. And I mean, we got different techniques to measure stuff. Like it's not, not only one technique, we can, we can do it on multiple lanes and then confirm or deny stuff. And yeah, that's, gonna, that's pretty hectic in, the, like in this community. And there's like a certain asteroid which come pretty close to the Earth. And um, I think my next video is going to be about this. And um, yeah, that's that. So the next thing, if we talk about galaxies and universe, I mean, we see in nature, we see all different shapes, the spiral shape, vortex shape. I mean, we can see it if we go to the toilet, we can see it if we see water flow, it always trying to, to get in this um, natural spiral vortex type of shape it's like just uh, the way of nature and the universe energy is flowing through it like it's sorry for butchering that english but i'm trying oh but i'm trying to um to get to get it all right but not get too much information to confuse people because this is going to be a quick overview about many topics and people can decide if they want to go deeper in some stuff or or not I'm just going to show some stuff and it's everything connected like the, sh the stuff we're going to see here on the screen like the torus corpus geom ge it's, it's like geometry it's like um, it's not only in nature people building devices pe people building machines like generators uh, devices which are using this type of geom geom geometry to create energy to especially create more energy got more energy output than getting in that's called like a free energy device um that's a little bit problematic people believe some people believe it's totally crap to um scam people other people think it's the future um i would say i'm counting more on the second on the second uh second bit but um yeah i just want to cut on that and yeah the next thing is um, about all these informations i mean if it's uh, if it's like look at this ear and look at this look at the other forms i mean it's obvious there's there's something going on like the the nature and creation is not gonna use these things for random because they got like value actually and we should embrace this and build devices and build stuff um like 
with this type of geom geom geometry. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to do this in one um, in one smooth bit, but I'm seeing it's like not as easy as I thought. But I'm um, keep going. Um, about information, we got the national security aspect. Much good stuff is classified, and I mean that's like on the start of the video you heard Av Loeb speaking. And that we investing energy and resources in armies to fight each other on the planet. And that's like not less. I mean, we can just talk about nukes, how much nukes are there around. And it's just insane. I mean, mutual, mutually assured destruction, like the abbreviation is mad. It's like, what the fuck? Um, we got nukes to scare another to scare another faction. If they nuke us, we're going to nuke them and everybody is dead. So they don't, they better don't do it. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean... That's that's the hybris. I don't know. I don't want to get too deep on that. And there's another thing called counterintelligence. I mean, the whole world is cringe. Like, um, actually just lying. I mean, for me, it's just saying not the truth. It's like just forming a narrative for your own, for your own value, for your own gain, and not um, actually telling the bare truth. And these are two things that are related to stuff like borders and armies and fights and stuff and i'm not want to say oh i want a one one nation government because there's another conspiracy involved in this and people are saying oh man that's like the total control i mean we already live in total control man it's like the borders are just cosmetic things but we invest and they make money in, in, in war machines and stuff and nukes and if we just skip all this like if we just up our consciousness and make peace like uh, people gonna say oh that's hippie shit and hippie stuff but come on that's like it's 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 like the way it works if you look at the universe and if you just think one second there's another species out there um imagine we come we're looking at their planet and we see them fighting at each other and for us it's all the same and and they're not holding together you know what i mean i mean it's like not not hard to get i guess yeah talking about information i mean there's some people on the planet who are not actually engaging in all of this stuff, internet and all of this, they're just living like they lived a thousand years ago. And they, for some reason, they gain knowledge. We just gained a few decades ago with high technology, with telescopes or physics stuff. And one of these tribes is the Dogon tribe located in Africa. And this tribe is a very old tribe and I think there was some anthropologists and other scientists chilling with the tribe and getting information from them and they got information about celestial objects, especially the Sirius constellation and they got knowledge um, we just discovered in the 1970s, like 50 years ago and they knew this for thousands of years. So how did they knew this? I mean, there are people saying, they're saying, oh, the scientists and anthropologists, they get it wrong. They just filled the gaps with their own imagination. And they, these people don't know anything. But yeah, I mean, there's always two camps these days. It's the total polarization of everything. So yeah, I think it's it's hard time to live in, a hard time to get it right. But I think there's more than the brain, which can perceive information. And you can actually do something with your heart. And feel, um, it sounds a little bit weird, but I don't know. I, I don't know how to put it better. So, um, yeah, talking about UFOs again, I mean, there's like thousands, hundreds of thousands of videos and pics on the internet where you can see these things flying through the sky. And if they're all fake, I mean, maybe they're all fake, but there have to be a lot of people sitting there and doing 24-7 CGI work. I'm not a specialist in this field, but I think it's not, I think it's not so easy. I think you need to do something and some of them are actually pretty well done or I mean, if they're real, whatever, but it's getting more and more and it's get it's a different ones. I'm seeing different ones. I'm not um, going on the internet and looking at this for four hours a day, but sometimes if I'm eating or something or I'm just chilling and looking something like this one channel, third phase of the moon. That's not a channel where you get much wisdom from. That's more like a hype channel and they they make 20 minute video and just uh, looping the same thing and talking about it. I mean, it's uh, no no offense to these guys, but uh, you, you won't gain anything valuable from this. Yeah, it's just looking at <laughs> looking at cool videos, basically. But yeah, that's that. So now I'm going to run through some individuals in the field and um, some individuals and groups, I should say. And I'm going to start with Avi Loeb. That's the man we heard at the beginning of the video. 
he's like um he's like an astrophysicist astro scientist he written many books got many papers out and he's like on the forefront of the scientific community looking for aliens ufos um there was like the celestial ob object Oumuamua, which was actually proposal supposedly from another galaxy from another solar system whatever like it was not not from our place and uh, he done he was he got uh, he was on podcasts on shows talking about this written book about this and yeah people like him some people say he's a Mossad agent whatever I think he I think he he's he's like he said some pretty good stuff and if you want you can check him out I'm gonna put some in the description but you can just Google the guy he's famous as hell yeah and then this I think everybody know this guy this is Joe Rogan like supposedly the best or not best the most famous podcast on the on the planet like uh, on spotify and he was like for some people it's the first entry into the ufo field because they don't know better or they don't even got interest in this because he got a pretty pretty big audience and he got like several people on i'm gonna go through uh, some of them this is bob lazar this is a guy um, who is like one of the OGs of the UO, UFO law, I would say. Uh, he was supposedly working at Area 51, the whole Area 51 story. I think it was back in the 80s. I'm not sure about. Should have looked that up before, but I'm not sure. But years ago. And there was a big story. I mean, it was international. People know it's like older people in my area just know about this guy. But um, if you dive deep in the field and if you're pretty interested in the stuff uh, you may change your opinion on the guy because hmm, there are some holes in the story there are some things who's not actually there's some unharmonious unharm things i would say but still the guy got a co the guy got a company in selling i would say <laughs> ufo space aerospace related stuff so if he if he's gonna do some nice commercial i mean yeah you have to think like What's the motive on this? But yeah, that's that. You can look him up. He got the appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast. There's another guy uh, called Jeremy Corbell. He's like, um, yeah, Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. George Knapp covered the story back in the day and Jeremy Corbell done a new thing on like recent documentary. And so they get together and he said it's his mentor and stuff. Some people call this guy out for counterintelligence. But to be honest, I think the guy is just hyped he got no no scientific background he got nothing to bring he got the curiosity and he's a hype man and yeah people i don't want to judge people can judge for themselves think for yourself i'm not here to make to form any opinion straight i'm just want to give some information out and just reflect my experience with the thing and yeah then they got the they got their podcast it's called weaponized you can check it out but there's not much scientific tech info inside it's just talk about recent things but if you enjoy this for some people it's the first gate they go through if they want to join the ufo field yeah so the next one this is a pretty more serious guy this is richard dolan uh, some people referring him as the um the best ufologist and stuff i, I rate him highly He's like, he's got a historic background, I think. He appeared in many documentaries and um, he was putting out videos recent, like on a, on a regular schedule. And yeah, um, I put his channel in the description. He's like, he's like, I would not say mainstream, but um, he's like, many people rate him highly because he's like on the side, he's skeptic, but he's, he's open-minded on the thing. I can just recommend him if you want to get some I would say basic infos on the UFO topic, not going too deep. Yeah. So then this guy, this like uh, special person, I would say, is Dr. Stephen Greer. He's a medical doctor, and you see in the picture the threat is not extraterrestrial; it's the threat is covered human. So um, he's got his own story. He's like he's going fully in. He's got fully on the deep state. He he said um, yeah, but he's he's feeding conspiracies like. Um, the government got you the few of us, the government got all this tech, the government um, like got fiber and rent and whatever, some other techniques, it's all coming from UFOs. He's like, and he, he got another thing running. He got an app, it's called CE5. It's actually an app where you can, um, yeah, where you do a meditation and some type of reverse remote viewing. And I'm gonna explain what that is later. Um, to actually make contact with extraterrestrials. and 
uh, you, you guess it, it's actually too much for most people. <laughs> so people don't believe this guy. People, if they see the name, if they see the guy, if they hear the voice, they call Crifter and said I'm out and stuff. But to be honest, even if he, 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 he he's, he's appearing coincidentally a lot if he got a film and a documentary coming. But I mean, that's normal. He's just, maybe he's not... He, he did not like it to go in public so long. You have to say the guy's doing it for 30 years or even longer. So, um, yeah. And if you're going to go on his channel, you're going to see a lot of very crazy stuff and a lot of very deep stuff. And I think that's why most people can't handle him. But, um, I mean, people these days, they just want to copy and paste and they just want to champion a guy, putting him on their T-shirt, going out and, and hype this guy for 100%. But this is not how it works. Like, you have to take many stuff, many persons in consideration and to make your own opinion and stuff. And, yeah, I mean, he, he got many. He's, like, 30 years active. He got many stuff. He got films. He got documentaries. It's not all bad what the guy puts out. And you don't need to, yeah, you, know, you need to tat it on your chest. So that's that. Okay, the next thing is like, um, this is like the guy is called Brandon Fugel. He um, owned a place called Skin, he oh, he's owns a place called Skin Rock Orange in Utah. And this is a place where I can do, a, there's so much stuff on the internet on Skinwalker. It's like a place, like an old ranch in the Utah, in the in a basin in Utah. And there's like crazy stuff going on, UFO sightings, a lot of UFO sightings, some other trickster, like poltergeist activity and crazy, crazy stuff. And that's like even on the History Channel. So I got mixed feelings about this because, I mean, we got uh, MK Ultra and all the projects, and maybe that's just a new place to try out their toys and get a disguise out. But on the other hand, if you see the guy in person and let in person, like if you hear the guy speak and stuff, he he he's he's a really likable guy, intelligent guy, and you just already you just maybe I don't know how to put it in English, but. I don't know, you won't believe him, yeah? You want to believe him and you just won't go, oh, it's curiosity and we're going to lift this this whole mystery. And yeah, you can search him up. He's done a lot of appearance on the podcast, etc. And yeah, I just want to go quick in between right now. Um, many people say, if you see UFOs, if you can, if you can uh, do remote viewing, that's like a conscious thing. It's like, some people even say it's like, an, an, like, like, you got areas in your brain, like the ganglion, basal ganglion. Gary Nolan said something about this. Uh, he's a scientist. Um, and and if you got these certain areas in the brain, you most likely can see the UFO and stuff. But this is going pretty deep. And the remote viewing thing is another one that's like going into more like the conscious spiritual stuff where you meditate first and then you reach another state of meditation where you just see things. And it's got some quantum entanglement inside and it's it's so much I don't want to, I, I can make it right in such less time. So you can research it or I'm going to pick it up on a later video, I'm pretty sure. Um, so these guys, they're all like pretty famous scientists in the field, more or less. The left side is Hal Puthoff, we got Eric Davis and we got Russell Tark. And I'm not quite sure who's on the right right now. But um, these are all like physicists. Um, I think um, Hal Puthoff is an electro guy. Like he's not he's not a not a physicist. But um, these guys are everywhere in the field. These guys are doing remote viewing. These guys are supposedly building UFOs and stuff. So um, yeah, better save those names because if you want to learn something about government stuff, like what's the government doing. And um, I mean, they're all on the NDAs and stuff, but that's so old. I mean, Russell Tark, I think it's over 90. And I think they're going to spit some. You can read something through the lines. You know, you can read something. You know what I mean by this. Then we got another character who's like right now pretty active on the Internet in the UFO field. And it's a scientist called Jack Safadi. He's a, a physicist a PhD physicist and he's like 84 at the moment and he's got a very very interesting story if you want to actually I can actually recommend to listen to his story if you're interested he's got crazy stuff going like as a child he got called by a robotic voice at the age of 10 or something and he said it was a conscious UFO who called him and said you're going to meet the others in the future in 20 years and it's pretty pretty blockbuster type story 
And I mean, he done a lot of stuff and he's like on the forefront of this field. And some scientists think he's like crazy, but I mean, we heard it on the Galileo thing. Uh, crazy is not, it's not bad and not, it's, it's not bad if you are crazy, but if you are crazy, crazy, it's like a different story. So yeah, that's Jack Safadi. And now, okay, yeah, that's like a very important point of the video right now, because I'm going to shout out the alien scientist. This is like probably, and at least in my opinion, one of the underrated channel ever on the, on, the, on, the, on the YouTube. And this guy is putting out content about conspiracies, content about UFO stuff. And he's actually, he got a physics background. He's chilling with physics guys. He's, he's got like a good group running with smart people and he um brought up like he got sometimes he got jack safadi in the in the random live stream and stuff and then pretty interesting conversations and yeah i, I waste a lot of hours on this channel and i recommend him very very highly and uh yeah you can look him up and he's got all types of he got almost 500 videos he got stuff about jfk 9-11 ufo tech he's going not about talking about conspiracies all the day he's he got like i said he's doing actually lab work they they got results you can look it up if you got a tech background it's even more nice but if, even if not it's still entertaining and still important to see what's up in the underground he's like he's considering himself as underground and um yeah that's that um yeah, this is the APEC conference. It's, it's like connected to him as well. There's a guy called Tim Ventura. He's a great host and he's got very, very nice interviews with high intelligent guys on his channel, Physicist. All like it's all about APEC is for alternate propul pro propulsion and it stands for alternate propulsion and other two letters, whatever, but um, engineering conference. Okay, it's on the screen. And they're putting up, I think it's one or two times a month putting up um, big webinars, five, six hours with like heavyweights in the scene and everybody can just listen. You can just participate. They're dropping steam, stream yard links. It's all open. Like it's all you can, it's all there. You just need to find it in the, you need to break through your algorithm or just find them because um, on YouTube, there's some shadow business going on. Some people, if, if they start a stream, like for me, sometimes he's streaming for three hours and YouTube notifies me one minute uh, after the stream ended and stuff. So there's some shadow shadow handling, shadow banning stuff going on, of course. So yeah, but that's why I make this video. I'm going to shout up some very good people and I'll put all of this good stuff in the description. Yeah. So then uh, we got another guy, Salvatore Pais, um, this screenshot. Um, it's him, and in the background, he was on a podcast called Toe, Theories of Everything, a very good uh, podcast as well. And this was his first appearance do it, doing something like this. He's like a um, PhD physicist, and he's actually working for the Navy on classified projects. So people, may people, some people think he already built a UFO for them, and he's like pretty... He, he I think if he wa if he can he would talk more but you see he he's a little bit restricted on things and his appearances are pretty rare over the internet but um if you got a tech background where you're just interested look him up he's got like a very very recent one with like the APEC guy Tim Ventura I can recommend this as well and yeah that's about him yeah, okay, I think everybody know this guy. This is like not a real scientist from the movie Independence Day, but I just want to put that on because we got Jack Safadi next and sometimes in movies there's more truth than you think, yeah? And we know this guy, he's actually working on Area 51. He was actually in the Independence Day film. I mean, it was a film. It was not like... In reality, there would be more guys on this, I guess, but ah, this is the real guy in our reality, yeah. And yeah, I think I talked a lot and I just want to make a cut here, I guess. And this is just the first video of the UFO field. I'm going to bring more and going to upgrade it, update it steady. And yeah, the next video is going to be about the asteroid I mentioned at the beginning, Apophis. And this is like a the, this, this asteroid is not supposed to hit Earth, but it's coming pretty close, very close, more even more close than the moon. 
And even if it's not hitting and doing damage, it's going to be a great event. And I just want to talk about this event next. And yeah, if you made it to the end, thank you, because um, I'm pretty new on this. And on the, on the one side, I want to try to get good and much information out. And on the other hand, I don't want to get lost and make it boring. So I hope it wasn't the case. And yeah, I just want to, at the end, I just want to shout out one more channel. And this is Daniel DeMissi. He's just started to make podcasts. And he got like, on this screenshot, he got 200 subs. And man, he got heavyweights on there. I listen to every pod on his side. It's not much, but I recommend it. It's like insane personalities. The guy is pretty, the, the host is pretty young, but pretty smart. And he can deal with them. And yeah, I think it's like a very, very great. It's very, very great content. And he, yeah, he's got some great minds up there. And I'm looking forward to this guy producing more content. So yeah, I think there are lots more of lot, lots more of people I didn't mention because it's going to get too long. But there are people in every country doing good work regarding to this topic. They're just curious. They want to get the truth out. I mean, there are people, some people are grifters. Some people just want to make money. It's hard to, to see who's good and who's bad. But um, that's why I think we need to talk. We just need to talk, talk about things, and then we're going to see it. And then we're going to get closer to the truth. And I think it's pretty important to do this. Not even, be, not even only to fly around in space with a UFO one day. Because I think if we grow as a species and grow in consciousness and we don't fuck up each other like we do all day and we get the overpopulation um, yeah, in a good grip, I think we got a good future, but um, if we just continue in doing war, threaten threatening us with uh, like the ugliest weapons like nukes and stuff, it's gonna end pretty pretty bad. And I hope people wake up. And yeah, I enjoyed this, and I just want to put this pick at the end. It's like a pick symbolizing confusion, and I just hope over the years we can get the internet right. I don't want to censor the internet. I don't want to do something like this, but I hope people just do the right thing. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, people, that's it. Um, thanks for listening and see you next time.